Today we're going to talk about the emotional impact of a metastatic cancer diagnosis. My name is uh, Dr. Sandra Finestone, and I'm the Executive Director of the Association of Cancer Patient Educators. I myself am a breast cancer survivor and have counseled hundreds of women and men with cancer diagnosis from decision-making through recovery and follow-up. The purpose of this program is to provide an understanding of the myriad of emotional stages a patient experiences when dealing with a metastatic cancer diagnosis. Today's participants will be able to identify the range of emotional experiences that may accompany a metastatic diagnosis, identify coping strategies to help manage emotional well-being, and identify online resources that address emotional health for cancer patients. Being diagnosed with cancer is like having the picture of your life broken into pieces and hopelessly scattered. You feel a myriad of emotional distresses, anxiety, depression. Your spirituality will be questioned. You'll feel loss and grief, and you'll experience social impact. We're going to discuss all of these things today in this presentation. And what causes this emotional distress? Sometimes it's disease related. The disease itself can cause you physical discomfort, which relates to emotional discomfort because of the uncertainty. Is it treatment related? Is the treatment causing you to feel these things is it causing depression? Is it causing anxiety? Is it developmental? Which means that uh, as the, as the um, treatment works and your body is experiencing different things, emotionally you will be feeling it as well. Or is it simply situational? Is it where you are in the treatment journey? After the diagnosis, your life changes in all aspects. The diagnosis itself brings the numbing shock. How is this happening to me? It brings anger. Why is this happening to me? And it brings fear, fear of what the future will bring. Life before cancer seemed safe. It seemed certain. It seemed full of possibility. And after cancer, it feels frightening. It feels finite, and it always feels uncertain. You've been diagnosed with metastatic cancer. Who do you tell? Do you share this with your family, your community, uh, your workmates? Who don't you tell? Are there people that you don't want to share this information with? These are things that you're going to have to consider once you know that you have this metastatic diagnosis. And how are the treatments, how is the treatment going to affect you? If you're working, are you going to be able to continue to work? If you can't work, how, what about your finances? How is that going to impact you and your family? Are you going to be able to continue to function as a spouse or a parent or someone who has an important position in your community? Are these things going to continue or are you going to have to draw back and perhaps not do any of them anymore? I always tell patients in today's world, because of the advances in cancer discovery research and certainly treatment, you have options. And the good news is you have options. But the bad news is you have options because you as a patient 
are expected to make the decisions about those options, those decision treatments, those treatment decisions. So what are your options? Your healthcare team is going to tell them what they are. They may be surgery related, they may be treatment related, they may be changing treatment related. And how do you make those decisions, the decisions that you are expected to make? You're not a clinician, you're not a doctor. You don't, this is a world that you've been dropped into, a world that you don't know. How are you going to make those decisions? And more importantly, who is going to help you make those decisions? I will tell you that sometimes people give you advice that is not helpful. Sometimes those that care about you will push you to do treatment that you're not comfortable with and you have to stand strong and do what you feel is right in those decisions. People may even encourage you to do alternate treatment or not treatment at all. Again, speak to your healthcare team, learn what your options are, make the decisions that are right for you and ask help for those who you feel can support the decisions that you are about to make. And when treatment begins, your life changes. How is it going to change? You're going to be bombarded with doctor's appointments and places to go and medicines to pick up and, and schedule your life around when your treatment is going to be. And how is your ha family handling these changes? Things that they relied on you to do, you may not be able to do anymore. Time that they wanted you to be there or expected you to be there, you may not be able to. And I would uh, caution you to expect to be disappointed. Almost inevitably, there will be people in your life that you expected to be there for you who are not. But I will also share with you that you will be surprised by those that step up and surround you and smother you with their kindness. People that you did not expect to be there for you. And these are wonderful surprises. The disappointments that go, the wonderful surprises of those that fill you with their kindness, hold on to and cherish. Patients very often have a longing and an aching for life as it used to be, for life as they thought it would be or should be, the life they expected to have. And very often that is not the life that they have now. Today's life is full of treatment, full of disappointments, full of anxiety, full of fear. And there is an aching for life that you used to have. Patients often struggle with loss of control your treatment is being determined by your healthcare team. They will tell you that for your particular type of cancer and your particular stage of cancer, this is the treatment that they're recommending. And the treatment they're recommending is based on very well done research with thousands of patients that have gone before you. And the outcome of your treatment is actually being determined by the treatment itself and how well you respond to the treatment. So it seems that there is nothing that you, as the patient, can control. And for those of us that like to be in control, this is very often a big struggle. Anxiety is going to be one of the emotions, or could be one of the emotions that a lot of patients deal with. It has to do with the uncertainty of what your treatment is going to be, how you're going to respond, uh, what the future holds for you, and, and how your life is going to change. Anxiety about that. The most important, I think, is what the future is for you, particularly for those that have had a metastatic diagnosis, because you will probably never be out of treatment again. You may have times when treatment stops, you have respite, you become NED, which is no evidence of disease, becomes your very best friend. But um, then life can change again and you need to go back into treatment. 
and that's your future. You have to learn to accept that and learn to embrace it, and that's difficult to do. That's why anxiety does come in. Depression seems to be an almost normal result of a cancer diagnosis. Patients are overwhelmed with feelings of sadness, with feelings of remorse, with feelings of hopelessness, and they, they're discouraged when treatment doesn't go as well as they had hoped. Or they're discouraged even at the diagnosis of a metastatic uh, disease. And sometimes this hopelessness turns into feelings of lesser value. They're not as important in the family as they were before because they're not contributing as much as they were before. They're not as valuable at work. Perhaps they've had to stop working. They're not as valuable at contributing to the family finances. And maybe their value was, um, came from community involvement, things they did in the community or a position that they had in their faith communities or their larger community as a whole. And very often this changes uh, when the cancer progresses or, or puts them in a position where they cannot compete or continue to hold the positions that they had before. Spiritual distress is something we don't often think about when there's a cancer diagnosis. But when dealing with treatment and its after effects, it's not uncommon for people to question their belief and their value system. Why is this happening to me? I'm a good person. I've always treated other people well. How could this happen? I thought that I was in a safe place, in a protected place. The system there, a spiritual system that normally would provide strength and hope and meaning, meaning in their lives, now they're questioning it. And, and sometimes that's the biggest, for some people, that's the biggest struggle of all, the why. Why is this happening to me? How could this happen to me? Why was I not protected by my spiritual beliefs? And how can these emotional distresses be treated? Well, there's psychological support. You can go to a therapist like myself who deals with patients who've had cancer, who um, is aware of the stressors, aware of what to expect and perhaps how to handle it, offers support. You can go to individual and family counseling. If your family is struggling with this diagnosis, perhaps it's time to help them as well and seek out a counselor who deals with this, who, who deals perhaps with family stressors. There's cognitive and behavioral interventions as well. There's exercises that you could do. There's all kinds of things that you can look for that will help you through this very, very difficult time. And there are pharmacological management uh, options. Uh, these are what we often call antidepressants or anti-anxiety medication. And you can get these and, and your doctor and your healthcare team can help you um, find out what will work for you during this difficult time. And there are complementary therapies. We'll talk about those a little bit later, but it could be art therapy or music therapy or um, perhaps it, um, just uh, cognitive meditations, yoga. Never tried it before. This might be the time to try those kinds of interventions. And when treatment is over or it's stopped, how will your family handle it? Very often when treatment is over, your family thinks that life is going to go back to the way it was before, and it cannot. It will never go back to life the way it was before for a cancer patient. When you were well, before you were diagnosed, both of your feet were in the world of wellness. When the diagnosis happened, you stepped in the world of not wellness, of illness, the cancer world. And when treatment is over or it's stopped for a little bit of time, one foot goes back in the world of wellness, but one will always stay 
in the world of cancer. And how are you handling that? How are you handling, straddling these two worlds? Does your family feel safe when your treatment is stopped? Do you feel safe? These are questions that you need to ask yourself. You need to discuss with your family and you need to come to some place where both of you have your arms around and understand the feelings that you're all feeling. And what does tomorrow look like for you? You need to be open and you need to be honest in your relationships. For those that are close to you that are struggling with this metastatic diagnosis, what does it mean? What does the future look like? How are you going to handle it? How are they going to handle it? Talk about your fears. Talk about your uncertainty. Talk about your concerns how you're going to manage the treatment and those things in your life that you're not going to be able to do anymore. This, these discussions must be open, they must be honest, and they must be real. And don't expect too much of yourself. This is a difficult, difficult journey. One that you were, did not expect to take, one that no one gave you instructions or help to journey through. This is difficult time. Give yourself a little bit of slack and give yourself the tools you need to get to the other side. Remember, there's a lot of healing that needs to be done, both physically healing and clearly, clearly emotional healing. So what things can you do? Educate yourself. I believe very, very strongly in the power, knowledge of is power. What to know, what, know what to do, know what to expect, know how to manage it, know where to go for resources, all of those things. Build on the strength you had before and recognize the areas where you were weak so you can give yourself some tools to support yourself over those times when you're not uh, as equipped to handle things as you, as you know you will be. Exercise as much as possible. Exercise your mind as well as your body. Join a support group. Support groups are amazing places to find out how others got through this. What did they do? And perhaps some of the things they did will not be the things you do, but it'll give you a myriad of things that are possibilities for you to get through this journey. Use relaxation techniques. Meditation may be something you haven't done before, but meditation is simply listen to music. Music that you like, music that calms you, music that relieves those times of anxiety. Or perhaps it's music that's uplifting, music that gives you energy, music that wants you want to move, music that wants you make, wants, uh, to make you dance, or music that takes you back to another time in your life that felt good to you, that felt fun to you, that felt wonderful. Music is amazing. Guided imagery is just the same. Sometimes you can close your eyes and put yourself at the beach. You can visualize the waves going in and out. The time that the waves go in and the time that the waves go out and your body soon moves to that kind of movement. Or you, if the beach isn't where you find peace and, and comfort, perhaps it's the mountains, perhaps it's the desert, perhaps it's a beautiful place that you've traveled to at another time in your life. And art therapy is fun. It can be a craft. It can be painting. Maybe you've never tried painting before and you find that you like it. It can simply be getting those books that you color. It can be something as simple as that. And be a little selfish. Take some time for yourself. Maybe buy yourself something special or something sweet that you every once in a while makes you feel good makes you feel cared for. I am giving you permission to be a little selfish, to take care of yourself at times when you need to take care of yourself. And how can your healthcare team help? Their focus is usually on managing the symptoms of treatment. And they will tell you what to expect or possibly what to expect. Don't think that you will experience all of the 
possible symptoms that treatment can bring about. You may not. Some people go through treatment very easily. Some people have a very difficult time. Some people have time, a difficult time with treatment one time, but not the treatments that follow. This journey is very difficult and very uncertain. So know what to, how to manage, know what to do. Be prepared if these kinds of things happen. Your treatment team can also help you with referrals if appropriate. They can refer you to a psychologist or a therapist who deals with these kinds of things. Or perhaps a, a someone in the faith community that you've not spoken to before. Or someone in the community, another patient, someone who's been through your treatment that can be your mentor through this. Your healthcare team can also provide you with materials on community resources, such as the pink ribbon place uh, for patients, and not only for patients, but their family as well. Turn to them when you need help and referrals. They're there for you. The first step in the process of, from victim to survivor is to allow yourself to mourn your losses. If you're a breast cancer survivor and you've lost a breast, mourn the loss of that body part. It's appropriate. It's real. It should be done. I tell my breast cancer patients that that breast served you well for many years. It provided you with a beautiful body. It provided you with perhaps some sexual happiness. It provided you with pride. It provided you, if you were a mother, it may have provided you with nourishment for your child. But once it has cancer, it's not your friend anymore. And it has to go. And you have to say goodbye to it. And you have to thank it for what it's given you. And mourn the loss of that body part. Your health provided you with vigor, with energy, with excitement, with the ability to do many things. But that body that you had before, that health you had before, may not be there anymore. And you have to mourn the loss of that and look forward to what you have as opposed to what is now missing. And there's no right, one right or one wrong way to do this. Each person must find their own way, their journey from health to lesser health, to uh, survivorship and what that's going to look like for you. Grieve for your old self and for the life that it used to be and then let it go and let it go. It serves you no good purpose to hold on to that and to wish that it be, it is the way it was before. I'm asking you to accept your new self and to create a new future for you. What is that future going to look like? Build on the things you can do. Let go of the things you can no longer do. Survive, surround yourself with people that make you feel well and let go of those that don't. Put yourself in environments that uplift you and do not go to places that make you feel low. Create a new future for yourself, a one that feels good to you, a one that feels uplifting to you, and one that can be a place that gives you a new future that, um, that you can hold on to and be comfortable in. Long-term survival, even for those with metastatic disease, is increasingly common. I have friends who have had metastatic disease for close to 30 years and are loving, living full and loving lives. They travel, they spend time with family, they cherish time with friends. They do all the things that they love to do in a way that they are able to do it because of their um, 
now and perhaps limited um, energy. But living with cancer has much more to do with the quality of the days than the absolute number of them. Fill each day with people you care about. Fill each day with things that you like to do. And fill each day with something that is going to bring you joy. It's not that hard to do. It doesn't have to be huge. It can be small. It can be a day at the beach listen to the waves. It can be a day spent with someone that you care about. It can be many things. Fill those days with things that bring you joy. Most important is to keep living. Rehearse for future challenges because they will come. Consider the possibility of a relapse. It may come, I don't know, but consider it. Know what you're going to do, how you're going to handle it. Be prepared for the time that it comes so that it doesn't topple you off the chair that you're sitting in. If it doesn't happen, then there's no harm in being prepared. But if it does, you'll handle it much better. Confront your mortality. Those of us in this community do not do that well. Other countries, other cultures do it very, very well. We do not. I lost my parents uh, in the same year. And it was very difficult for me. I had a lot of things to take care of. I had a lot of things to deal with. Not just the emotion of losing parents so closely together. But it was all the things I had to take care of that were overwhelming. I made a decision at that time that my children would not have to do that. I've taken care of all of the aspects of my dying. What the music I want to have at my funeral. The pictures I want to be displayed. All of the things. I, I've taken care of the funeral um, expenses. I've taken care of the I've taken care of all of those things and I consider that a gift that I am giving to my children. I plan on living a long life, but when it ends, I don't want my children to have to take care of those awful and uncomfortable details. I consider that my gift. But don't let the fear of dying stop you from living. Please. Dying can be graceful, dying can be calm, dying in some cases can be a relief. But every day you should be living life to its fullest until the time comes when you're not living anymore. Focus on healing, both physically and emotionally. Diagnosing your cancer and treating your cancer is the burden of the healthcare team. But healing and acceptance must come from within you, must come from within the patient. That is what I'm asking you to do. Thank you for allowing me to talk to you today. I hope your journey going forward is healing and accepting. Thank you again.